So a logistics model versus a Malthusian model. Um, so what we've been doing uh, with exponential growth to this day, with uh, continuous growth, is using a Malthusian model, which in our case is this um, a at t, the function a at t equals p e to the rt, or I've always called it pert, where p stands for your initial amount, initial, um, E stands for the Euler number, 2.718, dot, 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 R is your rate of growth, your constant rate of growth, and T is time, and the time could be in years, and uh, minutes, hours, seconds, doesn't matter, whatever the situation deals with, um, that's your time. In our case, most of the time in population, it's, it's, it's years, most of the time. Um, and most of the problems you deal with, it's t time is in years. Okay. Well, unfortunately, this is this model. Just really quickly, let me just kind of sketch that for you. Would probably look something like this, where it um, goes up and up indefinitely. You know, an, an exponential growth curve, kind of that typical exponential growth curve you're used to seeing. Problem with that is, it doesn't model populations very well. Um, because as a population overpopulates or starts to uh, use up its resources, um, that's probably not going to continue going up and up forever. At some point, you're, you're going to have a, a cap where you cannot sustain any more population. Um, and you're going to have famines and uh, things like that because of lack of resources. And so, that's the um, Mal Malthusian model, and uh, is what we've been using for continuous growth, and models it pretty well. But a more realistic model is this logistics model. Okay, this logistics model takes into account that at some point there's going to be a maximal, maximum sustainable population, a carrying capacity, you might say. And so, um, the graph over here, just generally, without getting too deep into the mathematics of it yet, um, so this is going to exponentially grow. If this is time, should be labeling, and this is my population. And at some point, it's going to um, we're going to reach our max population, and we're going to reach this carrying capacity. We'll call it C. Because that does what is what it stands for in the function. So it's an asym it's going to be an asymptote where we can't the population can't go any farther above that line because there's just not enough resources to sustain that population. Um, they you know if you look at some videos online that they'll say the human population on the planet Earth uh, has a cap or a, a carrying capacity of about 10 billion people. So we're quickly approaching that. So, so let's kind of break this thing down then and uh, kind of show you what everything means and then I'll give you an example. So first off, C, as I said before, is that carrying capacity. C is carrying capacity. So the most Um, that's the that's the cap on our population. We're not going to be able to go above that. Then B is our rate of growth, our constant rate of growth. So maybe um, we grow at 12% a year. So B would be 0.221. Okay. Um, and so, but to get the initial population, very easy in the Malthusian model to get the initial population. It's just that number in front of the E. Well, in our case, uh, it's in front of the Euler number. In our case, it's a little, in the logistics case, it's a little more difficult than that. You have to use the A number. And so, um, if we let our initial population that we started with be uh, P sub naught here, You're, you know, the subscript of zero typically means your initial something or other. 
in this case initial population. We can, there's a formula to find that initial population out of this model. So A equals C minus P sub naught over P sub naught. Okay. So those are, that's kind of the formula you need to help you find the initial population with this stuff. So let me give you an example of, of this and uh, we'll work with uh, maybe horse populations. This will be a totally fictitious uh, problem but we'll, it'll give you something to, tangible to wrap your mind around. So let's say that the Oregon Bureau of Land Management finds the logistics function to represent their population of wild horses. This model is going to be listed below. I'll write it down there here in a second. Uh, we need to find what is the carrying capacity of the population, which would be where we should cap the population, the growth rate, and the initial population that we started with for this particular model. This just kind of gives you an idea of what the numbers mean and where they're at. So I did get, uh, these are actual numbers that I got from the Oregon. Uh, we have a couple horses and uh, from that particular wild reserve, and so interesting to see their numbers and so this is kind of how I would model that based on the numbers that they keep so the population of horses is uh, 2860 divided by 1 plus 1.13 e to the negative 0.12 t Oops, and it, so it wouldn't be h at x, it would be h at time t. So I almost messed that up big time. So that is your um, initial function. So what, is, what do all those numbers mean? And we'll also graph it here. So we know our carrying capacity, I'll just call it cc. Our carrying capacity is 2,860 for this particular. So that's the max number of horses that we should be keeping there. Um, anything above that and we'll start to see uh, degradation in the population as, in terms of famine, you know, degradation in the land where they'll eat too much and uh, destroy everything around them because they're eating it all. And that kind of thing. So 2,860 kind of is where the population is going to cap. And then, um, so our growth rate, so growth rate is just that R, well in our case is 0.12. So um, this particular group of horses in this state grows at around 12% per year. I, and actually I made that number completely up. I don't know how quickly they grow, but uh, I didn't have time to go through the, all the data. But it is online, so look up Oregon Bureau of Land Management. Then um, you also have um, we need to find the initial population. What, you know, what did we start with or what should we be starting with? So a lot of times they go out and collect these horses for adoption. You know, um, that's usually the population they begin with. Collect as many as they can, get that population down um, so that they can start that growth cycle again. And so if you looked at this over time, it would be more periodic. But um, let's just, we're looking at that one band of time just to see what this logistics thing does. So your initial population, again, is found by that equation, A equals C, I called it CC, but minus P sub naught over P sub naught, where P sub naught is your initial population. And A, in our case, is this 1.13 number. So we know then that, I'll put it over here, 1.13 equals C, which in our case, I already forgot, oh, there it is, 2,860 minus, we don't know the initial population, over the initial population. And so what you're going to do here is you will go ahead and uh, solve this for P sub naught. So if we solve this thing for P sub naught, I'll put this over 1 and cross multiply. So I've got 1.13 times your initial population equals 2,860 minus your initial population. So we'll add this initial population over. And you would have now 2.13. A 
initial population equals, whoops, and I forgot the zero, 2,860. And again, um, how did I get that 2.13? Well, um, if there's no number in front of the variable, we can put a 1 there. So uh, 1 times p is still p. So uh, 1.13 plus 1 is 2.13. And so your initial population then is just divide those two numbers. So it's going to be 2,860 divided by 2.13. So initial population, 2,860 divided by 2.13 is equal to around 1,342 horses. So, um, so there's kind of where all those numbers, uh, where we use all those numbers, where they come from, things like that. And uh, in GeoGebra, in terms of GeoGebra, here it is. I went ahead and graphed it. Um, here's the, the function p at x equals, I should have called it h at, h at x, but uh, I went ahead and typed it in GeoGebra. Here's the function. And you can see it looks exponential, but uh, I'll pull down, pull down that y-axis. You can see where the initial, um, initial population lies. So... Let's go ahead and intersect that in there. Let's see if I can, there we go. So yeah, 1,342. Um, so there it is graphically, 1,342. So we didn't lie there. That worked out good. And now we'll go ahead and bring this down so that you can see, I'll kind of change the Y scale, and you can see what that logistics, uh, where you have that, uh, y intercept, so, or not y intercept, that cap, that that uh, um, carrying capacity. So if we go ahead and stick in a line there, so um, y equals 2,860. There you can see that asymptote, and you know it's really hard. You'd have to zoom in quite a ways to notice see that that's an asymptote. Um, it doesn't quite reach it, and then I might, oh yeah, there we go, so there the lines split apart, I'm zooming in, so that just kind of shows you how that, whoops, well, I'm still zooming in, just shows you how that, how that works, there we go, and so kind of, and what, what a logistics function looks like, I, you don't see these very often, but you can see that asymptote, and the C is the 2,860 max population for the horses. So I uh, hope that helps you understand logistics uh, or logistic functions better. And uh, that's it. Good luck. See you next time.